Hello and welcome back and we're doing further testing with 10GBE to Thunderbolt adapters. We're going to continue using the QNAP model, that is their own Thunderbolt adapter, otherwise known as the QNA T310G1T. And we've connected that via Thunderbolt to another Synology NAS, the DS3018XS. Yes, it is a QNAP Synology mashup. So, what we're going to see is if there's any performance difference between this and the Atom. We've already done the test with the Sonic Solo 10G. And now we're going to see what happens with this adapter. One, to see if we still get those speeds. Or two, are they even greater? So, first thing first, we've already mapped network drives. So again, if you need to see it, we'll make our way into that. Come out of that, we need the network drive first. Go to there, go to my computer. And there is our RAID 0 test with the data on it from the previous test we did a little while ago with the Sonic. Um, so the drive is set up, the share folder is set up, and this is the QNAP here. We're using the QNAP adapter there. If we go into the Thunderbolt settings, we should be able to see. As you can see, that adapter is plugged in, and there's our QNAP adapter there connected there, and it's connecting this device to 10 GBE to create a separate 10 gigabit ethernet network. So there's our networks there and I've got Wi-Fi and there's the ethernet network at 10 gigabits per second utilizing that device. Really, you wanted to go to properties there, Rob? Let's have a look, or well, status perhaps. No, it doesn't want to let me play the game. Let's do that properly. 10 gigabit per second connection. Perfect, that's what we wanted to see. So first thing first, let's do the AJA test. With AJA testing, um, we're gonna see what these bad boys do. There's the RAID 0 test, the three SSDs, we've got the RAID 0, and boom, let's get this party started. So immediately, we're looking at uh, 500 peaking into 600 megabytes per second, right? Um, while this is doing this, I should say that the QNAP adapters um, own internal fan hasn't kicked in, which is pretty good. And we are utilizing a Synology DS3018XS. That is a dual core Pentium um, D CPU, the 1508. And we see the write speed now has now exceeded 600 megs. Now, when we did the Solo 10G test, these are very similar to those. Um, and right now, we're going to let this run through a little bit longer before we switch to Black Magic. Now finish up a little bit there. We're seeing it peak occasionally into 700 there. And again, these are random tests. We could change it from 2K to something a little bit lower. We could move and look at some of the others. And we will be doing um, similar speed tests with these devices with a much more powerful CPU very soon. But for now, I think we're looking at some great little results here. And again, much better than the test we did before that involved an Atom. Now, if I get a chance, I will be doing a test using a Celeron-based CPU to see how that sits. Perhaps we'll use the 251B from QNAP, or perhaps we'll utilize the 453B. Either way, we'll be doing another bench test on another CPU shortly, just to show you the impact that the CPU makes on 10GBE NAS editing. But I think we've seen enough of AJA there. Let's move away on to Black Magic. And again, do bear in mind we are using a a mid-range SSD inside this NAS in order to get some data back and forth from it with the test software. So do bear that in mind in the read and writes. Once again, as I mentioned previously, the Black Magic Speed Test software, one of its little quirks is that the write test ends as soon as the data you've been writing to it is written, which kind of makes sense when you think about it. But the result is that the write test is always a great deal shorter and faster than the read test. So you have to leave it on for a little extended period to get a more realistic idea of the read and write there over time because it needs more data with which to fulfill that average. And we're already seeing the speeds in excess of that 600 we saw earlier. Hopefully we should be seeing something closer to seven. There you go, there's your 700. And this is a great speed for editing externally given that SATA based hard drives would have given you about 100 megs. Uh, a localized SSD would have given you about uh, 400, maybe between 350, 350 and 440 megabytes per second. So not only can you now edit externally over 10 GBE on a NAS uh, via a connection such as 10 GBE or Thunderbolt to 10 GBE with the adapter, but also you can edit it faster than you would locally. And ultimately, that's what makes this so appealing to content creators. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up and then I'm going to prep things, prep things for the next video in our test of 10G to Thunderbolt adapters. See you next time.